flashlight on your phone. Let's take a look. So let's have a look at this really strange setup. I've got a pile of books with a mug and the phone in it. I've got the plants which I want to cast shadows and then I've got the piece of paper. Wow, look at those amazing shadows. So you could use a plant, you could use some twigs from the garden, either with or without leaves. You could even see what objects from around the house cast interesting shadows. I think I like these twigs best. So the next stage is to trace all the lines. Wow, I am so pleased with this. Look at this, I hope you can see those lines. Now there are so many things I could do now. I could move this slightly and just offset it and trace again, that could look really cool. Or I could uh, turn it round completely and trace uh, all those lines again and that would give me a much busier page. That would look something like this, if you can see that. So that has become really abstract. But I think because this design is quite busy, I'm gonna keep this one as it is and work into it. I'm gonna divide this page in four and show you four different media so you can choose which one to try. So in this first section, I'm going to try out watercolor. Uh, remember to always um, dissolve your paint in the block. Try it in the palette, test it on a piece of scrap so that whatever you put on your page, you always know what you're getting. I think one of the nice things about watercolour is that it looks like watercolour, so you could try working wet in an area and then adding some really dark paint to it and letting things bleed. Be nice. I think that's how I'm going to work in this section. on some scrap paper. You might like to do that too. Um, and as you can see, I've started here and I'm just gonna see what happens. food colouring. I thought that might be something that you had at home. Um, I only have blue. Uh, I imagine it's a bit like ink, but let's give it a go and see what happens. I started painting with um, the food colouring and then I wondered if, like watercolour, um, it might um, react with salt. So I went downstairs and got some salt. So I'm going to try sprinkling this on. Ooh, yeah, definitely. So as I work, I'm going to sprinkle salt. And as you can see, the colour in the food colouring is um, sucked towards the salt. Wonderful. 
let's keep going. instant coffee. I've mixed up some instant coffee here and uh, I'm going to test the colour so I know it's not too light or too dark. Yep, happy with that. And I've also got some um, of the instant coffee here which I've crushed with my thumb and I'm actually going to be sprinkling this on. Let me show you. So, I need to paint a section and I'm going to use everything very wet. I'm going to keep dipping my brush so that it's wet. Don't want it to be thin. Keep dipping. You'll see why in a moment. And then I'm going to, onto the wet coffee, sprinkle some of the crushed instant coffee and you'll see a bit like salt helps make a lovely texture and see how the, the coffee is dissolving into the wet 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 surface and we keep going these techniques to use on your shadow artwork. Watercolour, pen, food colouring or coffee. Look at these two fantastic artworks created from shadows. This one here using coffee and sprinkles of coffee and this one here using food colouring and salt. Now it's your turn to make an artwork using shadows. Um.